Good morning everybody. It's an early morning here at 6 a.m. Got a big house and garage we're doing today. First truck's just showing up. Got the pump all ready to go. Got a three bay garage, about 40 by 42. Three trench drains in this thing. This thing averages about six inches thick. And then we got the house. House is 50 by 40, just four inches. We're gonna get them both poured today. We got Jim and Harvey here to help us get these jobs done. The weather was, we've been fighting a lot of rain lately, so nearly didn't wanna, we really didn't wanna cancel this. But it looks like it's gonna clear off a little bit later today and we'll get this done. So we're gonna get going here any minute. Hey everybody, welcome to my video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. My channel's all about pouring and finishing concrete. If you're a regular viewer, then thanks for coming back. Uh, let me hear you down in the comments, you know, where you're from, where you're watching from, what types of videos you like, and stuff like that. So we're just getting going, 55 yards we got ordered. Um, first truck, we're gonna start out here in the back of the house and work our way towards the garage. About a four to five inch thick floor in the house and six to eight inch thick floor in the garage. You know, we watch the weather very carefully and I get up at 4.30 every morning and watch the weather on three different channels, CBS, NBC, and ABC. So, especially if there's any chance of rain at all, neither, none of the three channels said there was any chance of rain today. And as you can see, it's overcast. It's kind of sprinkling out. Um, but we're pretty sure, you know, we wouldn't have gone ahead with it if there was any any major chance of rain. So we know that it's probably gonna it's probably gonna clear out here in a little while, an hour or two, and everything's gonna be just fine. Nothing worse than pouring concrete floor and getting rained on, though. It's it's a little nerve wracking, a little stressful. Uh, we've you know in 42 years, I don't know how many times I've been rained on and trying to think I don't think I've ever really lost the floor that we had to do over so there's usually a way you can fix it somehow now Darren's running the the hose we call this dangle pumping so the boom pump puts on one one uh, length of hose and he just kind of dangles it there and he moves the boom back and forth depending on how we like to to lay out the concrete <clears throat> you can see we're kind of doing it in a strip we like to like to do one truck at a time and and just keep it kind of in a uniform strip like this so when we go to finish the concrete with the power trials we can kind of tell where the first truck was where the second truck was where the third truck was uh, it just makes finishing the concrete a little bit easier now i'm way over there on the right i'm the guy with the the vibra screed i'm using mbw's screed demon today the gas powered one We've got the battery one too. We're using the gasser today. And these are what we call bays. So we're screeding a bay. That's a 12 foot screed board on the on the Viber screed. So we shoot our pads, you know, our wet pads based on, and the wet pads are the things we screed off from. We shoot those based on, you know, usually the width of the screed. And then we can, now oh, it's really sprinkling now. And then we can just screed the concrete down based on where we make our wet pads and you know Darren's coming right behind me with the bull float bull floating it smooth once we get the first truck down that was you know probably 10 yards right there oh, we'll move on to the second truck so you know the time it takes to mix the truck up to get it all poured out and to get it screeded I don't know it could be 15 minutes could be 20 minutes somewhere in that ballpark you can see how Darren's kind of moving it back and forth there, about six or seven feet. That does a couple things, you know, it just, it makes moving the hose a little easier. But the guy behind him, that's Luke in the brown shirt behind him, he's kind of, he's kind of raking the concrete as close to grade as he can by eye. That makes his job a little easier too. So that means he can just keep moving right in behind the guy with the hose. Now Eric, that's Eric in the white shirt, he'll be breaking it down. And you know he doesn't have a ton of a ton of uh, square footage he's raking down to try to get as close to grade as possible. He can just do that six or seven feet behind the guy that with the dangle hose. And then I'm coming behind him and I'm shooting my pads. So it's you know I want to kind of be right behind him 
that way I know if they're high or if they're low you know why they have the dangle hose right there they could they could just move it back up in that section a little bit if they're low and if they're high we can pull it right out and get it really close to grade by using those pads and it's just a basic process this is basically how we do it here you know one truck at a time we know based on the width here 40 feet wide that a truck's going to do right around 20 feet and in, in, uh, so it'll be like a 40 by 20 section if it's four inches thick so we can just kind of base our you know how wide Darren goes based on that right there you can see I'm coming right behind him shooting my pads we call those wet pads that's the exact same height as the top of the concrete wall over there to the right this is what we call a walkout foundation big one it's like 60 by 40 I think and then you know we'll get that second truck dumped we like to get the truck dumped right out that way he can get out of the way and then the third truck can you know stop mixing up back up to the pump just be all ready to go for us because as you can see you know it doesn't take us long to get it screeded and bolt loaded especially when we got five or six guys here things go pretty fast so the the quicker we can get this down the more evenly it's going to cure up and dry up which makes the power traveling that much easier you know that way we're not waiting you know one load's not getting hard while you're waiting for another load that's soft with a power trial it's much easier to finish if it all kind of cures up evenly and just about at the same rate yeah you can see the bays real good right there so that just that just makes screeding real easy and you know if you're not screeding off a pad like that I don't care how good you are you're not getting it very flat those pads those pads are within about a sixteenth of an inch according to the you know using that self level and laser obviously that has a, a plus or minus but it's usually pretty darn accurate so if you know we screed those pads out we get it within a sixteenth of an inch and then you know screeding off of those pads gives us something to go by in the middle of the floor which means which means this guy's going to have a really flat floor when we're all done versus just kind of just kind of raking it out and checking it with your rakes you know we put a receiver we put the receiver from the laser on a separate stick and then we can use that stick to check the level of the concrete and that's how I make those pads I'm actually using like a four foot level today Yeah, two trucks down. That figured about 25 yards down there. Looks like it's going to take about 23, 24. So it's looking pretty good down there. We'll use whatever's left in that third truck up in the garage. But so far, so good. Everything's going good. Now, if you're wondering why there was two different colors of styrofoam under there, it's just that's just what the homeowner had that's what he could get at the time they ran out of one color so we had to pick up some of the other color just so we could get this prepped and get us ready to pour because his uh he has radiant heat tube in it so he had to get the wire down and then the tubing guy comes and lays and ties all the tubing and uh just couldn't wait for the same color they're both basically the same r factor but uh it's not it wasn't that big a deal really and it did, obviously it doesn't matter to us we, we were just hired to come in and pour and finish so we didn't really have anything to do with the prep here. We're just subs. The guy in the orange there, the guy bent over on the right, kind of mag, magging the edges, that's Jim Cook. He's the one that did the foundation here. So he's got aluminum panels, three-foot aluminum panels, and he did the house, he did the garage. He kind of works by himself, although Harvey, the guy in the gray shirt with the hat on, Harvey does help him. They are kind of uh, related somewhat, but Harvey works for himself too. So, you know, when Jim needs a hand, he'll call Harvey up and, He'll go help him do the foundations, and then when we need a hand doing stuff, you know, we can call either, either Harvey or I can call Jim or both of them like we did today, and they'll just come help us pour some of our bigger pours. So kind of network together with each other like that to help make things a little bit easier. Well, yeah, there's the house. He'll finish both loading. We're going to get jump right on the garage now three bay garage with three trench drains every bay pitches to a trench drain so we're going to slope them down about an inch 
to each train. There'll be a high point in between each train. Kyle Larson getting into him this week on the last round, on the last one. Give him five minutes. Kyle Larson is going to be in All right, so pour in the garage. You can see it's got the two inches of styrofoam in it. It's got the wire meshed down with a radiant tubing tied to the wire. And that's all the wire is for, basically, is just to tie that tubing down. Uh, the, the heating guy didn't want us to lift the tubing up into the concrete. He likes it down towards the bottom of the slab, so that's where we left it. Now, we do have fiber mesh in the concrete, so that's we're using that, basically, for the reinforcement. Plus, it's, you know, between six and eight inches thick, so... This thing's not going anywhere. You'll be able to drive a tank on this thing. The What's different about this garage than most of them we do is the three trench drains. You know, a lot of guys will just have us slope the concrete floor out the doors from back to front. Or they maybe they'll put in like a six inch, little six inch square PVC drain. Um, so this guy just put in these four foot long trench drains in each bay. So there's a lot of there's a lot of sloping to this floor to make sure everything slopes to where it's supposed to. You know, we got high points, we got obviously the drains are the low point. The, that metal pin you see sticking up is a high point in between those two drains. And then there's another pin over there to the left that we'll get to in a minute. And I'm going around, I'm magging all, my, all our wet pads so we can strike off our um, strike off our grades using the wet pads. And then in towards the back, you'll see I'm going to grab the grade stick and use the laser, and I'm going to make because it's I'm going to make some more wet pads because it's too far to strike. We don't have a screed long enough to go from that back wall right to the drain itself, so we kind of need a wet pad in between, splitting the difference in the level to make sure the slope stays true. So I'm shooting my grade back there, and then I'm going to shoot my grade at the drain, and then I'm going to split the difference and then I'll make a pad you'll see I'll go back in there and I'll make a pad in between the wall and the drain and that's gonna make sure that we have a real nice slope from the back wall all the way to the drain and then we're gonna use different size screes because you know because of what we call the you know from the from the right hand wall to the drain is probably six feet so we need about a six foot screed there you see Darren and Eric are striking off the pad to go by and then me and Luca striking another pad so we can turn and, and screed the concrete down this way. So that's Luke up in the brown shirt up by the wall and that's me in the gray shirt. We're using a 10 foot screed and that bay slopes a little bit towards the drain right here. And then we're striking off our high point there so the, the, the floor is going to pitch to the right to the drain and it's going to pitch to the left to that drain from that metal pin that's sticking up, if that makes sense at all. So there really won't be any flat parts on this floor. Everything's gonna have slope to it. All right, truck number four. We had to wait for that one for about 15, 20 minutes. He was supposed to have them all right back to back to back, but we got to So he's gonna probably, he has probably 11 yards on that. He's gonna do quite a bit of this. Then we got one more truck coming after but it is pretty thick it's about eight inches thick over there in that corner good six inches thick back there this side here is seven or eight inches thick so we'll use we'll use most of it but we looks like we're gonna have plenty of concrete to finish this you know what makes what makes this job easier for us especially these bigger pours like this is consistency you know we want consistency in the loads being you know back to back to back to back we don't want big gaps in between or different gaps in between and then consistency in the mix itself with the guys mixing up so if we tell them we want a certain slump like a six we want them all to be you know really really close to the same slump so we're not having to stop and you know add water or if one guy takes a lot longer to mix than the other guy that that's kind of inconsistent that just makes our job a little bit harder so this basically having these guys show up on time having them show up 
you know, within 10 to 15 minutes of each other since that's about all it takes for us to unload a truck and then having them all to be able to mix up to the same slump makes pouring the concrete like this a heck of a lot easier. As far as putting the concrete in place, you know, if, if you've got a good concrete pump operator that can move that boom around and, you know, not only is he moving it left to right, but he's also moving it kind of backwards at the same time. And a good one will do it pretty easily. So it's not kind of, it's not kind of throwing the guy that's holding the end of the, that's holding the end of the hose around. Because that can really be hard on your back, hard on your shoulders, and hard on your legs too. As you can see, it's not taking Darren much effort at all to move that hose around. The guy, Gene, the guy that's running the pump is really, really good. He's been doing it a long, long time. So that that in itself can make the job really easy then versus if you've got a new guy that doesn't really know how to run that boom. Boy, by the end of the pour, you're just beat. You're tired. And we'll pump that right out, as you can see, all the way down to the last corner. We won't fill it all the way up. We want to make sure that if we're a little bit high up in here, we have a place to pull it back into instead of pulling it out over the form, making a mess on the outside. Now, this part of the floor, the front part here, from the forms you see we put across to the drain, it all slopes to the drain. I don't know, that must be like 20... 20 some odd feet there right around 20 ish feet so Luke on the outside is screeding off the form which is the highest part of the floor and that grade stays the same around the whole perimeter of the garage so it's it's that's about the only part that's flat is where the the outside perimeter is all the same grade and then from there it all like I said slopes to the drain down up to the high points back down to the drain back up to the high point you know and then back down to the third drain and you got to be careful how you bow float it too like Harvey here you can't just you can't straddle the drain with the bow float because it's sloping two different ways you know on one side or the other of the drain so you got to be careful how you bow float these things too what what makes you feel really good is when you get down to the end here and you know that num number one the pour is almost over but but you also have plenty of concrete and you didn't run out so you don't have to wait for a balance truck to come which usually takes about an hour yeah it's always a good feeling when you know you got plenty on a big job like this actually the concrete plant broke down these two last two trucks had to come from a different plant they're about the same distance away so that was kind of lucky that way get this thing screeded and both loaded and then just gotta hang out power trial today Well, there guys that's it I don't know how much concrete we used off that last truck I know there's some left on him but we ordered we ordered 55 the pump guy is just pumping whatever he's got left in his hopper and his pipe back into the truck so he doesn't leave a big mess on the ground but that's it we're gonna hang out power trial so we'll see you probably in about an hour we'll stop power trial we'll see you then So this is a little more than an hour later. I didn't actually get the first hit with the power trial. This is probably more like the second, third hit. I took off right after the pour and I went and looked at some other jobs. So I was gone for a little while. Then I came back and I reset up the I reset up the cameras. And so Darren's up here finishing the garage. Uh, Luke is down in the basement. I'll show you that in a minute. He's finishing up the basement. The basement actually is further along. It's almost done compared to the garage. But as you can see, as Darren's hitting the back there, it's I don't know if you can tell but it's getting a little darker it's kind of that's what we call kind of blackening out shining out so that part of the the garage is just about done the front here where it's a little bit more like gray is a little bit wetter still so that's going to take a few more hits before that's done but it's getting close um, and this is probably you know two showers two to two and a half hours after we got done pouring right now you can see it's still kind of cloudy which which actually made the finishing a little bit easier if it would have been right direct sun this thing would this thing would have snapped it would have took right off pretty hard 
But as it is, it you know, one guy can finish the garage, one guy can finish the house, and then Eric, Eric hung around too, so he helped do all the edges. And this is, you know, right after Darren got done up there in the garage, I moved the camera down here. So Luke's basically done with the house now. That's pretty much shined out. And we're going to get that power trowel off, off the floor and get it cleaned up and get it in the truck. I'm going to show you how we do that right here. We use our we use our crane we get from Harbor Freight. with the, And then we put a winch on it. comes with a little boat crank winch on it, but we take that off. We just buy like a like a 70 or 80 dollar winch like a super winch mount that on there and then it's got a remote on it so we can pick pick the power trials right up definitely makes it easier than doing it by hand and then we you know we measure out for the saw cuts these are to help control any cracks that may develop as the concrete cures shrinkage basically shrinkage cracks and then we'll get our we'll get our early entry saw that's the Hus Varna saw we use, and it's a gas-powered one. We got gas ones, we got electric ones, and uh, Luke's just going to cut them in. Those actually go in pretty fast once you know what you're doing. We take the guide off it. There's a guide. There's a little arm about 18 inches long that sticks out the front of that, and helps line you up with the blue line. But it just wiggles too much, so the guys just took it off, and they just eye it by eye with that part where the guide was bolted on. Is that that's the easiest part for them to do? Is just do it by eye now. And that's basically going to do it for the concrete, guys. So, again, I want to thank you for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings, multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in-depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.